Hello, everyone. This program is provided through a partnership between the East Central Iowa Council of Governments and Green Iowa AmeriCorps in Matthew 25. We are sponsored by the Benton County Landfill, Iowa County Landfill, Jones County Transfer Station, and Tama County Landfill. My name is Robert, and I am a summer steward with Green Iowa AmeriCorps at Matthew 25. I will be sharing a short story with you and talking a little bit about our footprint on the earth and how sorting our waste products can help protect water, land, and wildlife. The book we're reading is called The Snail and the Whale by Julia Donaldson and Axel Shefflin. This is the tale of a tiny snail and a great big gray-blue humpback whale. This is a rock as black as soot, and this is a snail with an itchy foot. The sea snail slithered all over the rock and gazed at the sea and the ships in the dock. And as she gazed, she sniffled inside. The sea is deep and the world is wide. How I long to sail, said the tiny snail. These are the other snails in the flock who all stuck tight to the smooth black rock and said to the snail with the itchy foot, be quiet, don't wiggle, sit still, stay put. But the tiny sea snail sniffled inside, then cried, I've got it, I'll hitch a ride. This is the trail of the tiny snail, a silvery trail that looped and curled and said, ride wanted around the world. This is the whale who came one night when the tide was high and the stars were bright. A humpback whale, immensely long, who sang to the snail a wonderful song of shimmering ice and coral caves and shooting stars and enormous waves. And this is the tale of the humpback whale. He held it out of the starlit sea and said to the snail, come sail with me. This is the sea, so wild and free, that carried the whale and the snail on his tail to towering icebergs and far-off lands. With fiery mountains and golden sands. These are the waves that arched and crashed that foamed and frolicked and sprayed and splashed, the tiny snail on the tail of the whale. These are the caves beneath the waves where colorful fish with feathery fins and sharks with hideous toothy grins swam past the whale and the snail on his tail. This is the sky so vast and high sometimes sunny and blue and warm, sometimes filled with a thunderstorm, with zigzag lightning flashing and frightening the tiny snail on the tail of the whale. And she gazed at the sky, the sea, the land, the waves and the caves and the golden sand. She gazed and gazed, amazed by it all, and she said to the whale, I feel so small. But then came the day, the whale lost his way. These are the speedboats running a race, zigging and zooming all over the place, upsetting the whale with their ear-splitting roar, making him swim too close to the shore. This is the tide slipping away. And this is the whale lying beached in the bay. Quick, off the sand, back to sea, cried the snail. I can't move on land. I'm too big, moaned the whale. The snail felt helpless and terribly small. Then, I've got it, she cried, and started to crawl. I must not fail, said the tiny snail. This is the bell on the school in the bay, ringing the children in from their play. 
This is the teacher holding her chalk, telling the class, sit straight, don't talk. This is the board as black as soot. And this is the snail with the itchy foot. A snail, a snail, the teacher turns pale. Look, say the children, it's leaving a trail. This is the trail of the tiny snail, a silvery trail saying, save the whale. These are the children running from school, fetching the firemen, digging a pool, squirting and spraying to keep the whale cool. This is the tide coming into the bay. And these are the villagers shouting hooray as the whale and the snail travel safely away. Back to the dock and the flock on the rock who said, how's time, how time has flown and haven't you grown? And the whale and the snail told their wonderful tale of shimmering ice and coral caves and shooting stars and enormous waves, and of how the snail, so small and frail, with her looping, curling, silvery trail, saved the life of the humpback whale. Then the humpback whale held out his tail, and on crawled snail after snail after snail. And they sang to the sea as they all sat sail on the tail of the gray-blue humpback whale. That's the end. What a great story. Let's talk about some of the lessons. So pause the video and see if you can think of some things that you learned from the book. There's a lot of things that I learned, such as that snails leave trails, and apparently they can read and write. <laughs> or at least this one can. They don't move very fast and can't travel very far without some help. And even though the snail is small, she was still able to help the whale back to the sea. And whales need to stay in water to survive, and the ocean tide comes up and down each day. And there are lots of other good lessons too, like how small actions can make a big impact, and that each of us has unique gifts that we can use to help others in need. The whale might just be a whale, but it was able to share its ability to swim and travel with the snail and make her happy. And the snail might be teeny and tiny, but she was able to use her knowledge and slime to save a ginormous humpback whale. We also might be teeny and tiny, like the snail, when comparing us to nature or the planet, but that doesn't stop us from changing something big, like the Earth. You can take small actions to make a big impact, too. One small action is thinking about the three R's. You might have heard about the three R's that you need to reduce, reuse, and recycle. And this is a great slogan. Today, these three R's are more important than ever. So what do each of these things mean? Reduce is cut, or cut down on the amount of waste that we make in the first place. This might be biking instead of driving, or using mugs or containers rather than single-use bottles and baggies, or using reusable grocery bags rather than plastic bags. And reuse. If we can't eliminate things, we should try and find another way to make use of it like growing vegetables in a jam jar, or buying used clothes. And that way, we extend a product's life and keep it out of landfills. Lastly, recycle. If we can't reduce and we can't reuse, you know, there are many things that we can recycle, like boxes, bottles, paper, and more. Recycling and recycling properly lets us make old things into something new without having to take more from the And a lot has changed in the world that makes the three R's easier and more important than ever. But did you know that there are even more R's that you can use to help save the planet? What about replant? Many vegetables that your family buys at the grocery store can be replanted and regrown, like potatoes and green onions. Onions especially grow back quickly, and they're really fun to watch. Or repair. Instead of throwing something away and getting a new one, see if you can fix it first. Or return or resell. If you're done with a book, maybe the library would take it. Or another fun one, rot. A lot of the things that we put in the garbage, like vegetable scraps, greasy pizza boxes, eggshells, paper towels, and yard waste, can actually be, be turned into compost, which can be used in the garden to help plants grow. And you can make an easy compost bin at home.
Now it's time for some activities. Did you know that in 2018, 62% of garbage going into Iowa's landfills could have been recycled or composted? It's important that we're putting waste in the right bins because many of the things that go into the landfill take a long time to break down and could have been saved and made into something else. So we're gonna do two activities. In the first one, we'll learn about how long waste sticks around. And in the second activity, we'll learn how to make sure that the waste you and your family makes ends up in the right place. So for the first activity, we're going to round up some household items and then guess how long they'll take to decompose in a landfill. Now decompose simply means to break down, basically to turn back into dirt and nutrients. So let's get started. And first, before you do this activity, have an adult work with you. So with an adult, grab 11 small scraps of paper or note cards. And on each card, write the following units of time. A few weeks, a few months, a few years, a few decades, that's 10 years, hundreds of years, thousands of years, millions of years, and forever. And then you'll have three left over, and on those three, write compost, recycling, and landfill. And those three you can set aside, and we'll use them later. Okay, now find an open spot on your kitchen table or the floor where you can line these up in order like this. You'll need a little bit of room, so you can pause the video while you do this. Next, we're gonna go on a vacation in our own homes and bring back some souvenirs. With an adult, explore each room of your house and grab a couple things from each that you'll have to get rid of someday. Grab some bottles, some boxes, paper, washcloths, even electronics. Be creative and use whatever you got. Have an adult help you and don't grab anything dirty or dangerous like rotten food, cleaners, knives, or heavy objects. We can use clean and safe items as an example. If you want to use some food products, just grab some out of the fridge or the cabinet so you're not touching anything nasty. So pause the video and take some time to collect at least 10 items and enjoy your trip. Well, I had a great trip. I've got quite a few things here. Uh, now that we've all got our items, let's try and guess how long each one will take to decompose. So looking at your timeline, place each item near about how long you think it'll take to decompose. Pause the video while you do this. Now that we've all guessed, let's check our work. If you have tissues or paper towels, those will take about two to four weeks to decompose. Paper and cardboard from two to eight weeks. Cotton, three months. Food waste can take a few months, depending on the type of produce. If you have any milk cartons or orange juice cartons, those can take uh, a few months to a few years. Uh, plywood, other types of wood, between one and 10 years, and wool from one to five years. If you have any kind of synthetic fabrics or uh, mixed fabrics that include things like uh, polyester, nylon, spandex, those can take between 20 and 200 years. If you have a tin can, that might take 50 years. And same thing with to-go cups, such as coffee cups. Uh, aluminum cans are also in the 80 to 200 plus year range. Disposable diapers can take 250 to 500 years to decompose. Plastic bottles, such as water bottles and soda bottles, uh, can take up to 450 years. And other types of plastic, such as plastic containers, uh, envelopes with plastic inside them, plastic baggies, uh, plastic foil packaging, plastic bags, other types of plastic can take between 50 and 1,000 years to decompose. Glass is something that can take millions of years uh, to forever to decompose. Some scientists think that glass never decomposes. And styrofoam is also a type of plastic that never decomposes. And obviously these are estimates because no one has been around for a million years to watch something like that decompose, but these are based on the science of the materials. How does it make you feel knowing that some of our waste will live longer than we do? It makes me feel like I should reduce how much I make and reuse, compost, fix, or recycle what I can't avoid making. Speaking of doing those things, let's take the items that you just collected and sort them into the right containers. So take all the items off your timeline and take away the labels. 
set out your labels compost, recycling, and landfill. And now before we get going, let's review what each of these mean. Compost is where you can put things like grass, leaves, fruit, and vegetable peels, tea bags and coffee grounds, paper towels and napkins. These are all things that decompose super quickly and can make soil and nutrients for plants. Recycling is where you can put things like paper, newspaper, rinsed and dried plastics, clean boxes, metal, and cartons. And landfill is where you should put most other items or items that you're not sure about. If you're in doubt, it should go in the landfill because this way we don't make clean recycling or healthy soil dirty. So now we're gonna place our items next to the label that we think they belong in. So take a moment and pause the video while you do this. All right, let's check our work. Into the compost, again, you can put things like tissues and paper towels, coffee grounds and tea bags, 100% cotton fabric, fruit and vegetable scraps, and soiled cardboard and soiled paper. Into the recycling, you can put clean recyclable plastics and clean glasses, along with clean paper and clean cardboard. And again, if these things are soiled, they should either go in the compost or the landfill. Into the landfill pile, you want to put non-recyclable plastics like baggies and food packaging, uh, any type of multi-layer bag, and other non-recyclable items. Things like paint, batteries, bulbs, and other hazardous materials should be brought to a drop-off site, as these are not safe to go to a landfill. Some types of bags, such as grocery bags and even some food packaging that says store drop-off, can be brought back to a store and be recycled at the bins in front. If you don't have compost at home, it's super easy to start your own bin, or you can put those items in the landfill, but it's best to avoid that because it creates methane. But remember, it's best not to have any materials end up in any of these bins. So let's reduce, reuse, repair, and replant. So now to take action, see if you can brainstorm what items or activities you can reduce and what items you can reuse, repair, or replant. Contact your local government or landfill to see where and what specific items they take in their different bins and how you can be a better material sorter. Talk with your parents about what can and can't be recycled or start a home compost bin which puts less waste in the landfill. I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you have a great day.